presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Christmas. Out of every winter comes spring. That familiar warmth reminding us baseball is back. It is a fresh start. Hope renewed. Another chance. It is a new season with infinite possibilities. The wait is over. Spring has sprung. the Valley of the Sun, Phoenix, Arizona, spring training baseball for you Milwaukee Brewers fans. Our first game on television as we welcome you to Maryvale Baseball Park. This afternoon, the Brewers are set to take on the San Diego Padres, and the Brewers are off to a terrific start so far on the young spring training season. Hello, everybody. Alongside Bill Shorter, I'm Craig Kishan. Welcome to our first broadcast here on Fox Sports Wisconsin. About 70 degrees, sunny skies. It's gorgeous, obviously, for spring training baseball, and the Brewers are just getting started. Rock, what do you think so far? Best month of the year, isn't it? The long, hard, cold winter's over. We're here in Arizona, and the players are looking pretty good. A lot of new faces, a lot of energy. Craig Council has put together a very disciplined, organized spring training. These guys are learning a lot. It's going to be interesting to watch them throughout the spring. Well, the starters are uh, being marched on to, out to the mound uh, so far here on the early spring training season. Taylor Youngman's going to get his first spring training start today. And, of course, he made a, a huge splash in his Major League debut. Had a terrific first uh, full season in the majors. He'll be out on the mound today. And, again, last year, what a difference a year makes, right? Taylor Youngman, nobody really talking too much about him in spring training. Came up. Outstanding work. Not too many Brewer pitchers came up in their first time and did as well as Taylor Youngman. They're going to be counting on him a little bit differently this year. They rely on him to put together some good starts. He needs to build off of his success from last year. Well, again, he had a first uh, terrific first half of last year, and now he's going to be able to be on this Brewer roster from the beginning of the 2016 season. We'll talk about that rotation and plenty more as we progress. Padres Brewers coming up. to Maryvale Baseball Park. Brewers and Padres are ready to battle here today. About 70 degrees, partly cloudy skies here in the Phoenix area. A perfect day for a Monday afternoon baseball game. And the Padres are in town. Andy Green, their young manager, 38 years old, puts this lineup together with Jankowski, Norris, and Myers due to bat the first three here in the opening frame against Taylor Youngman and our starting lineups brought to you by Potawatomi Bingo and Casino. And there's Youngman finishing 
his warm-up toss is ready to go for his first spring training start rock yeah really big surprise a year ago nine and eight and 21 starts at 377 earned run average really got off to a tremendous start he was actually nine and five over his first 16 starts a 242 earned run average kind of ran out of gas in the month of september oh and three era a little bit high over his last five starts so a uh, nice surprise a year ago he's going to be relied on a lot more coming into this season Take a look at our Badger Mutual Brewers defense here to open things up behind Taylor Youngman. He'll be tossing to Martin Balvedano, then it's Shane Peterson at first today. Yadiel Rivera, who's uh, made a big splash with his bat, and it's going to be VR over there at short. Aaron Hill at third. Flores out and left. Newen Heiss in center. And Weimer Liriano, the former San Diego Padre, out in right field today. And we are ready for our first pitch from... Taylor Youngman as he is set to go against Travis Jankowski. First pitch into the big lefty is in for a strike. So both these clubs kind of uh, mirroring what they're trying to do starting in the 2016 season, and that's going to rebuild mode. The Padres were hoping to contend out in the West a year ago and ended up firing their manager, uh, Bud Black. And uh, Pat Murphy, the Brewers' now current bench coach, was their interim manager for about four months last year. So he's well aware who these Padres are, but uh, they've changed over, and a lot of new young faces over here, too. Yeah, rebuilding. And you remember last year in the offseason, you know, the San Diego Padres made a big splash, signed a bunch of free agents, but never did really work out. A lot of trades during the season, and uh, they're a young team along with Milwaukee. And a young manager in the Andy Green as well, 38 years old. And of course, Craig Council in his first season, first full season as the Brewers manager. There's a look at Pat Murphy. Again, the interim manager a year ago and uh, strong baseball ties to the Phoenix area, former Arizona State coach, also the former Notre Dame coach when he had Craig Council there years ago yeah, it brings a lot of energy to the field too you can always hear murph uh, you know chattering uh, during uh, infield practice some of the f fundamental drills that they do during the day and he and eddie are going to have a contest this year see who's going to be able to talk the most oh boy. well talking's one thing and look out in that brewer dugout is that uh, ball's ripped in to their dugout here's orlando arcia saying i've got it everybody's good and yeah, that's the one thing that uh, everybody's been talking about uh, with this Brewers spring training this year, energy. A lot of energy every single day. A lot of young players. And they all know that there are jobs to be had. So you figure the energy is going to continue. Little roller. And there's your first out of the ball game as VR takes care of business. So Jankowski out, 6-3. That'll bring up Derek Norris, the catcher. You know, with young players, it's always important to start them off early with the fundamentals, the discipline play. And Craig Council has been very happy with that in the first week down here in spring training. They've been playing some pretty solid defense, not making a lot of mistakes. And that's why they haven't lost a game yet. They've been playing some pretty good ball. 4-0-1 in the Norris division of the NHL. They've got the tie, <laughs> right? Right. Speaking of Norris, Derek Norris at the plate. There was no tie-in intended there, you but had it, that. it you worked were, out. Yeah, you were ready for that the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Don't lie. Yeah, the Brewers just one of two unbeaten teams in uh, spring training. That's between uh, the other team, the Los Angeles Dodgers. They're at 3-0-1. Nice pitch by Young, then he off speed. 0-2 the count on Norris. Yeah, the fastball, a good pitch for him with that very unusual delivery cr thrown across his body. But you know, I think teams are going to be more ready for that this year after seeing him... Uh, for an extended period of time last year. Going to be important for him to start mixing in more consistently the off-speed stuff. He's got that natural cut to his fastball. That was what was so impressive about him a year ago. And then coming up after a very average, at best, minor league career. And just something clicked last year at the big league level, and he was outstanding. Is it amazing when you, when you look at some of these guys? That that's what this sport is all about, though. It's you got to have that time for development, maybe like no other professional mm -hmm. sport. Well, some guys really have you know, average minor league careers at best. Come up to the big leagues and find that early success. It's going to be very important, you know, for the Brewers' coaching staff. 
Derek Johnson, the new hitting coach, and Craig Council to keep an eye on some of these young starters for the Brewers. They're going to be expected to do a lot this year. And Norris strikes out. So two down for Youngman, who, by the way, is wearing number 26 this season. As you take a look at this. I mean, that's a dandy ball. curveball. Yep. That's exactly where you want it with two strikes. Good block by Maldonado. Now, Rock, I say he's wearing 26 because that was Kyle Loesch's number the last three years. Youngman wore number 41 mm -hmm. when he made his major league debut. And it's interesting, you know, talking to Loesch and some of the other young starters in they'll continue to talk about what Kyle Loesch meant to them last year in their in their first big league experience and uh, basically teaching them how to be a professional baseball player on and off the field. Yeah, there's more to success than just physical ability out there in the mound and you know on the field. It's how you handle yourself. You got to learn from your mistakes and although it was a disastrous season for Kyle, he did uh, provide a lot of uh, instruction and uh, some guidance to this young staff. There's uh, the Brewers' new pitching coach, Derek Johnson. He's made an impact early with the young pitchers and the veteran pitchers as well. He brings, a, well, not just a different voice, but kind of a different philosophy. You know, a lot of, a lot of what he is trying to do with them is to relax and understand who they are as pitchers and go with your strengths in a lot of ways. And a lot of times it's not the message, it's the delivery. I mean, that goes the same way with hitting coaches and pitching coaches, whatever it might be. I mean, you know, the message is not all that different from team to team. It's just how it's presented, you know, the positive way that it's presented and different ways to get to each and every pitcher and player. That's a good pitch. And it misses for ball three. Three and two now the count. Will Myers at first base for the Padres. Six games played by the Padres. They are one and five. Here's the payoff pitch. A little grounder foul. That lead tunnel right next to the Brewers' new pitching coach. Lee's going to be coming back again as the bullpen coach. Ed Cedar back. Darnell Cole's back. And the rest of us, a new coaching staff here in Milwaukee. Derek Johnson was telling me how much he appreciates what uh, Lee Tunnel has meant to him early on, considering that pitch high and inside. So the first walk, just considering Derek Johnson's first new experience with this club, it's his first major league job. He spent the last three years in the Cubs system, and prior to that, 11 years at Vanderbilt, their pitching coach. And that one not even close. And but Taylor Youngman last year, if you recall, yeah, did a pretty good job throwing strikes. I mean, getting ahead in the count. And it was that uh, deception that got him by, uh, along with the location, the deceptive delivery that uh, really got him to where he was at the big league level. And I think, uh, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, it's going to be a little different form this year. These uh, these hitters are going to be used to that delivery. They've seen it before. Runner goes. Maldonado's throw on the mark and in time to get Will Myers trying to swipe second base. Martin Maldonado loading up and firing that gun. And this is how the opening frame ends. Caught stealing. Brewers coming to bat.
here in their half of the first inning. Martin Maldonado gunning down Will Myers to end the top of the first. So Craig Council's seen some good defense early on. This is a look at his Potawatomi Bingo Casino batting order. Flores will get the leadoff role here today out in left field. Then B.R., Hill, Neuenheis, Luriano, Peterson, Maldonado, Middlebrooks, and Ybarra. Middlebrook serving as the DH, and they go up against Andrew Kashner. Yeah, big dude, 6'6", 205 pounds. He's been around a while. Disappointing year last year with the Padres. Boy, 6-16. Six Earned run average at uh, 4.34. Looking for big things out of Kashner. Started his career with the Cubs, got traded to San Diego. Oh, gosh. He opens up against Ramon Flores, who's out in left field today, the left-handed hitter. Came over from the Yankees organization, a 300 hitter a year ago at AAA. So the Brewers want to give him every shot of uh, making the club here and see if he's ready for that next step. You'll take a 300 hitter out of AAA and give him a shot. Yeah, a lot you? of bench jobs open for yeah. the Brewers this year. I mean, the starting lineup, as you look at it right now, not a whole lot to... Uh, not a whole lot of mystery except for perhaps center field. But on the bench, a lot of guys are vying for those uh, utility roles. And this one up the middle of a hit, so a good start for Flores. And the Brewers, they get their leadoff hitter on board. Guys have been swinging the bats. They've had a good approach. Scoring some runs, some dramatic wins down here in the first week of spring training. Had a walk-off yesterday. That was fun. And a line drive bullet right over the head of the pitcher and into center field. And Flores can run. Yadiel Rivera with his second ninth inning home run in as many games. Yesterday's turned out to be the winner yesterday. Here's Jonathan Villar. 375 early on this spring. The Brewers batting at a 305 clip here. In the first five games of spring training, so players feeling it, using that energy that you were talking about on the offensive side anyway. Flores goes, throw to second wow. base in plenty of time. How about that throw? My goodness gracious, what a throw behind the plate by Norris from his knees. From his knees and a bullet and getting Flores easily. I don't know if that was a hit and run or not, but not a very good jump. You can see a small lead, not a good jump. VR swings right through it, and Flores is an easy out at second base. I don't think it's supposed to look that easy, is it? That was a hit and run. It did, just didn't make contact, looked like. Didn't get a very good jump. All right, these are some of the things, though, you try to iron out at spring training, right? right? yeah. Two, one. And VR returns the favor. And hits one into the Padres dugout. Happened to the Brewers on the Brewers' side. Yeah, VR penciled in as the opening day shortstop. Looks like he's going to be at short. Question is, where is he going to hit the batting order? Of course, that's the way it stands now. A lot can happen. And VR strikes out. So two down here for Kashner to open things up in the Brewer half of the first. That'll bring up Aaron Hill. He's at third. And he's one of the newcomers for Milwaukee that Craig Council has said wants him to start over at third base. Of course, came over in that Gene Segura trade from Arizona. Plays most of his career over at second base, but last year started to play some more games over at third, become a little more versatile. And you have to have some veterans in your starting lineup. The veteran at third. You're going to have Braun out there in left field. Luke Roy behind home plate. Can't have all young players. Now, versatility is what it's all about, and, you know, you've got guys like uh, Middlebrooks who have come over, spent most of his time over on the American League side, and they're coming over to the National League side where it's much more important if you're going to make the roster to play more than one spot. It's the outside corner on Hill, one and two. But as luck would have it, Middlebrooks is the designated hitter today. As luck would have it. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the old days in the American League. Like, yeah, I can handle that one. 
Right back at Kashner. Look out. And look what I found. Stuck his glove out there. And that's not a wake-up call. I don't know what is, but a good start for him in the first inning. One, two, three. We head to the second. No score for Mary Bay. Must be spring break for those guys here in Maryvale. Great to have everybody aboard that's uh, at the ballpark today and on television here on Fox Sports Wisconsin. Brewers and Padres set to move to the second inning, and uh, you can do that on your spring break too, Rock. That's a good spot right there, out there in the hill. You get a blanket right by the on, beer Brian. chalet. That's a good, good seat. Jabari Blash is set to lead off for the Padres. You grab a grab a blanket out there in the hill. Officially, it is 67 degrees in Phoenix today. But you can tell the people that are coming from up north, can't you? Yeah. Short sleeves and shorts. Well, it seems like it's 20 degrees colder than it was a couple of days ago. It was in the nine, almost yeah. 90 degrees down here last week. A hot start to the spring, no yeah. doubt about that. Today, the coolest day of the spring. This one hit hard to right field. Liriano going back, watches it sail over the wall. A leadoff home run here in the second inning for Blash. That is his first hit and first home run of the spring. A strong man. Wow. They would go with it into right field and out of here by plenty. Check out the pitch. It looked like it was away. Could have been down a little bit more, but uh, yeah, good swing. Waits on it and knocks it out of here to right field. That's a can of corn at Petco Park. That's right. But we're not in Petco Park. The, Boy, toughest... the ball was jumping yesterday, wasn't it? Boy, I tell you what, the uh, Brewers with three home runs, I believe, and the Indians with three home runs. Wind blowing out again today out to left center. There's Hunter Renfro, the right fielder. Padres have two of their top ten prospects in the order today. Renfro, number three on their list. Numbers for the Miners last year. He can hit some home runs. This one, high fly ball, center field. Neuenheis. And that's the first down to the second inning. Yeah, these teams that have a lot of young players, a lot of jobs open, you got to believe the intensity is pretty high, not only in workouts, but in games. I mean, these guys want to perform as opposed to the teams that have a lot of players, veteran guys that are just looking to get in shape and get themselves ready for the regular season. This, those kind of teams might get off to a bit of a slower start in spring training. Build up to that crescendo for opening day, but the Padres, as young as they are, are off to a rough start this spring. Not sure what that means, but hey, you want to win when you can win. Nick Newton 
fouls that bunt off. Absolutely. Well, you know, here's what it does for a team like the Brewers right now, Rock. So many new faces. That means new teammates as well. And as they try to get used to one another and uh, understand that they're going to spend a long time together this season, why not win out of the gates? Right. A lot of athleticism in this Brewers roster, the spring training roster, and very deep. So, you know, the guys that make the team on opening day, not necessarily locks to stay there all season long. They're going to have to produce. Well, the Brewers starting rotation. This one hit right down the line past Peterson. Noonan on his way into second base. He will have a double there as Liriano gets the ball in. So a home run. And a double here in the second inning off of Youngman. Now you can see the pitch from Youngman trying to get inside. It looked like Noonan was waiting for it because it looked like it was in off the corner. Pulls the hands in, rips it down the line, keeps it fair. A good piece of hitting on a decent pitch. Austin Hedges, the DH steps in number seven hitter in the Padres order here today against the Brewers runner at second base one out a run already in for San Diego and it's basically two seam fastball the natural cut fastball for young men he's got that good overhand curve ball started to work a little bit on a change up as yeah, the season went on in the big league level last year. But his bread and butter is that cutter. He's got to keep it away, keep it down. He's really not going to overpower hitters all that much. Well, for somebody like him, he wants to get that rhythm and timing back that he had when he made his major league debut. He said as the season went on, he wore down and his timing was off. He said if your mechanics are off and you're inconsistent, you're going to fall behind in counts, and hitters are going to take advantage of that, and that's what happens. Well, and especially when you have mechanics like Taylor Youngman, as you know, with his delivery, it could be a good thing and it can be a bad thing. There's a lot going on with that delivery, not conventional by any stretch. And when your mechanics are off a little bit, you're not going to be able to find the strike zone. 3-0 the count on Hedges. And watch that uh, that toe. He picks it up. He's actually dragged. He drags the toe about a 45 degree angle between home plate and third base. That's very unusual. And he loses edges on four pitches. So first and second. Alexi Amarista in now. 15 balls, 15 strikes so far. And we saw in yesterday's game, when we were on the webcast rock, that uh, Garza did not make it out of the second inning before his pitch count ran full. Yeah, they're on strict pitch counts. You know, right, you know, 35, 45 pitches, that's pretty much it. There is activity down in that Brewer's pen. So a little building up that pitch count to opening day. It's like Chris Capuano loosening up down there in that Brewer pen right now. Alexi, how about? Come on. Here's Armarista, third baseman for the Padres today. First and second for San Diego. And he well, misses well, inside. Well, one and one. Looks like that change up that time. Trying to get the feel for it. Rock, what are these very first spring training starts like for these pitchers? Well, just trying to get their work in. Get, a, get something positive to uh, you know finish up on. You know, get ready for your, you know, the next uh, the next time out. Get out of there without injuring yourself and 
Yeah, a guy like Youngman knows he's going to be in the starting rotation. It's a little bit different for him than some of these guys that perhaps might be battling for a job. It's not about results for Youngman today. It is for others. There's a strike hitting the outside corner. Youngman began the season last year at Triple A. And you know, in Colorado Springs, his numbers, he was two and three with a six three seven, so we weren't quite sure what to expect what he got here, but he made the most of those early starts. His first ten starts, he went eight and one. Brown ball, Peterson can't handle it. Ball gets knocked away. And everybody's going to be safe and the bases are loaded. They tried to charge you to get the, uh, the short hop. He couldn't do it. That second hop got him. And it's going to be an error on Peterson at first base. Who uh, did play a little bit for the Brewers in the big leagues last year. You can see that in between the hop. He kept it in front of him. That keeps the run from scoring. But, you know, now the bases are loaded. And Craig Council is out in the pitch count at 35. Rock mentioned that is an important number here for first spring training start. So he leaves. We'll talk about the relievers coming in when we come back. What a game. the middle of the second inning here pitch count reached 35 he leaves with the bases loaded and that's going to open the door for Mitch Lampson to come in a big tall lefty as you take a look at the final numbers on uh, Youngman there's still three runners out there though and the Brewers are uh, going to hope to get out of this mess early on here as Lampson opens up with a curveball Lampson a just in case over from the minor league camp today in situations like this where the starter not able to get through two innings. So Lampson on. You can see his minor league numbers. 40 games, a 3-2 and two record. You see the strikeout right, guy brings on. it in there Come pretty on. well. Brewer selected him from the Braves minor league organization in the Rule 5 draft in December. So new to the Brewers organization. He has pitched at the double-A AA and triple-A levels in 2015. So we'll see where this lefty winds up here as he tries to keep his pro career going with the Brewers organization. Ball and two strikes as he faces Jameel Weeks, the younger brother of Ricky Weeks, the longtime Milwaukee Brewer. Fouled straight back. 
Tough guy to double up, and you say, you know, Lampson would love to see a ground ball to get out of this mess. A rare error committed by the Brewers in this inning. They've been playing some pretty tight defense in the first week of spring training. Shane Peterson trying to show his versatility at first base today. Two and two to count on weeks. Ricky, by the way, signed to a non-roster invitee with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Mm -hmm. Jamil spent most of his time in the Oakland A's organization called strike three. Hey, good pitch on the inside corner. Not sure what Weeks is looking for with the bases loaded. This is a, a pitch that you got to certainly take a pretty good hack at. And look, plenty of the white of the plate, then Weeks right. takes it for strike We're three. Better. So Lamson delivering. He gets out number two of the inning, so top of the order in Jankowski. He grounded out to short his first time up. Bases loaded for the Padres. They had a leadoff home run in this inning by Blash. And then it was a double by Noonan. Hedges walked, and Armorista reached on an error. Lefty versus lefty. Jankowski the advantage right now. It's 2-0. Oh. Right, well, he saw me put my hand on uh, Hits it hard, right field. Mariano turning around and makes a nice catch out there for the final out. So the Brewers get out of a bases loaded jam thanks to Lampson. They go to the Brewer half of the second, they trail. is a good shot of the beautiful Sonoran Desert here in Arizona, the Suaro Cactus Craig. Beautiful. Hey, introducing well the Brewers' most flexible ticket plan ever with the new Fan Choice 10 pack. You can pick your 10 games as you go, plus you get opening days, your free 11th game, all starting at just 16 bucks per ticket. Learn more at Brewers.com slash 10 packs. Another beautiful day here in the Phoenix area. Kashner set to work the Brewers half of the second inning for San Diego. Had a 1-2-3 first. And he faces Kirk Neuenheis, who came over from the Mets organization. Hits it hard the other way. Lash giving it a run, and it is in foul territory. Had a chance to make the play there. Don't know if he lost it in that Man, high skies. It. Yeah, misjudged like it. It is a little bit of high sky. There are some high clouds, but... Really didn't get a good beat on it. That's what uh, 
they're looking up at in the sky here in Maryvale today. I've seen a tougher, I've seen a tougher sky before. They just lost it. It's mostly cloudy here, yet the sun is creating a shadow. As you take a look at New and Heist in that batter's box from high above, you can see it. See a little bit at the plate there. It's one of those days, Rock, I don't know if I should be wearing sunglasses up here while I'm doing the game or regular glasses, so I'm going the safe route. Yeah. Just wearing the regular glasses. Right, you can always switch. You can always change. This one hit in the left field. Nice piece of hitting for a base hit. New and Heist. Going to hustle into second and try to stretch it out, and he is in there. Good effort by Neuenheis, and the Brewers have their leadoff runner aboard here in the second inning. That was with the New York Mets a year ago. Neuenheis, a veteran outfielder. Nice short stroke. The lefty able to slash one out there into the gap in left center. Yeah, it looked as though they were playing him toward the line and left, and... A hustle double to start the second. All right, as Reimer Liriano steps up to the plate with a runner out there at second base, right away, first pitch into center field. Neuenheis being waved home. Here comes the throw, and it's going to be in plenty of time as he is nailed at the plate. Good throw out there by Jankowski. Right on the money field. on one hop. All right, the Brewers starting pitcher, Taylor Youngman, is joining us now on headset down in the Brewer dugout. And uh, Taylor, how you doing today? Let's uh, go over how things went for you. You didn't make it out of that second inning, reached your pitch count at 35, but uh, tell us what it was like out there in your first spring training game. Yeah, I mean, these interviews are, are always a lot more fun after a good outing. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm just working on a few things, uh, really focusing on the change up this uh you know, this spring training in this season. Um, I threw a lot of them today, and I was happy with a, a few of them, but I uh, still have to be more consistent with it and be more consistent throwing strikes. Yeah, terrific season for you a year ago, Taylor. Uh, great start to, the, to your year last year. What were some of the things you were working on in the off season, getting ready for spring training? Uh, pretty much the same thing I just said. Uh, really being consistent, uh, throwing the changeup in the zone, and uh, just being more consistently in the zone with the fastball, getting ahead of hitters, um, and then just... I mean, that's that's about it. Yeah, it looks like you guys are going to have a pretty young starting rotation. You guys looking forward to challenging each other as the season goes on? Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, every rotation does that, whether you're young or old or, you know, whatever. I think, uh, you know, last year I think we tried to compete against each other every every outing and try to outdo each other and things like that. So I think it's always fun to compete. Well, talk a little bit about uh, your new pitching coach, if you would, uh, Taylor. Uh, Derek Johnson, uh, new for you guys. You have a, a relatively young staff as well. What kind of an influence has, be, has he been like early on? Yeah, no, I'm from Austin, and uh, I know a lot of guys in Austin that have worked with him, whether it's, you know, my pitching coach back in Austin or, or guys that have been the Cubs organization, you know, uh, played play for him in college, things like that. So, I mean, every everybody had good things to say about him, so I was really looking forward to meeting him. And, uh, you know, after getting to talk to him a little bit and then working with him in the bullpens, he's kind of feeling us out right now, uh, kind of figuring out how we like to learn and, and how he can talk to us and things like that. So it's, it's really been interesting getting to know him, and it's been fun so far. What kind of confidence do you guys have, uh, Taylor, in, in the fact that this team is rebuilding, but the, it's pretty clear the strength right now is your pitching staff, your starting pitching staff, and the fact that you guys are basically coming back together from a year ago. You might be young, but you've got some innings in the big leagues. Yeah, I mean, it should be an interesting year. I think we're all looking forward to it. And, you know, who, who knows? You know, it, <laughs> you never know what's going to be the strength of the team. It just depends on, you know, what comes together. And, you know, like I said, it should be an interesting year. All right, Taylor. Well, we appreciate uh, your time and uh, looking forward to good things for 2016, okay? Yeah, perfect. Thanks for having me. Okay, that's uh, Taylor Youngman. Uh, he got the start today. Uh, for the Brewers, and uh, we're early on in this ball game, and uh, I think the uh, the catchers are dominating <laughs> so far. That's the third uh, runner nailed out at second base already. And yeah, Norris once again from his knees able to nail a Brewer would be base stealer. He's uh, showing off that arm today. So Peterson draws the walk. A lot of activity. The first three. Uh, batters have reached base for Milwaukee, but uh, no runs yet. There's another look at that throw as couple, he gets Liriano. A couple of throw outs for Norris, and neither one of them very close. 
Well, the Brewers out there testing the waters. See what they see what they have on the base pads. Ordinarily, you ease into the running game as spring training goes on, but that's, I guess, more or less when you have a veteran ball club. But these guys have been running, being very aggressive, and I guess you really have to allow these guys to play their game when they're looking to make a ball club. Oh, no, 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 no. Nice stop by Norris behind the plate there, holding Peterson out at first base. Cashner working on a lot of breaking pitches as well. We heard that... Uh, Taylor Youngman telling us he was working on change-ups. You could tell he was throwing a lot of off-speed pitches, and that's going to be an important pitch for him, you know, in uh, 2016 because, you know, the fastball, the curveball, they were there for him pretty much the entire season last year. But you add that third pitch, that consistent off-speed pitch, the change-up, who, in my mind, I think is one of the best pitches in baseball because for a hitter, it's very difficult to pick up. So it's good to see him working on, uh, you know, that third pitch for him because uh, he's going to need it. And this one skips past the catcher, Norris, so Peterson moves up to second base. So another runner in scoring position for Milwaukee. Again, the first three batters have reached base safely, but uh, Peterson, the only one out there right now, is Newen Heiss was gunned down at the plate, and Liriano gunned down trying to steal second base. St. Peterson's dropped a lot of weight. Well, he looks uh, very... Lean and mean this year. A bunch of the Brewers from last year have dropped some weight. Bolinato puts it in play to short. And Newton takes care of him for the final out. Brewers threaten, come up empty. We are through two. It's one nothing San Diego. To grab the blanket, a cold one, pull those shoes off your feet, and enjoy a little Brewers baseball here from Maryvale. Great afternoon for spring training baseball. The Brewers hosting the Padres here this afternoon. We head to the third inning, and Chris Capuano is going to be on the hill for Milwaukee. Very familiar name. He was with the Brewers organization a long time, left the club in 2010, and spent some time with the Mets, the Dodgers, the Boston Red Sox in the last two years, and the New York Yankees organization. One of the good guys in the game of baseball. Cappy in 2005 with the Brewers. 18 game winner, 18 and 12, a 399 ERA in 35 games. He is a an 11 year big league vet, you know, trying to hook on with the ball club this year as a non roster invitee. Cappy sporting a full beard, which has become very popular among a lot of baseball players over the last couple of years. And um, he is set to face Derek Norris. San Diego catcher rips this one foul down the line. You ever had a beard? Uh, not like that, Rock. No, have, you, have you tried to grow yeah, a beard, Yeah, though? I've tried to. How's I've, it come in? It, it's okay. Is I've it got, spotty or is it kind of It's full? not real spotty. It's uh, different colors. Oh, white? A lot of white? Well, 
white now, not so much then. Yeah, it was well. a little red and brown back in yeah. the day. Yeah, just didn't, you know. Yeah, you're better off without it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cappy's got the, the facial hair because he spent the last two, uh, two seasons with the Yankees as he hits Norris. Hit Norris and then hit Martin Maldonado on the rebound. The Yankees don't allow facial hair. So as soon as he got out of the Yankees system, he said, I'm growing myself a beard. Yeah. And the funny thing is, when he was with the Brewers last time, you know, he was here between 2004 and 2008. Very meticulous as far as shaving. I mean, he would be very closely shaven before every start. Very meticulous about that. Going clean, groomed. Kind of as you get start. older, you kind of go away from some things that you used to like. Yes, indeed. But Don't the beard's be very that. well kept. That's not a beard that you would grow? You couldn't grow that kind of beard, Cashner? No way. Look at that. There's a, there's a pitching beard contest going oh, well. on. What about you, Rock? Oh, no. That's just overnight for you. You probably wake up in the morning sipping coffee with that big old no, beard. No, no, no. Very spotty, very white. Capuano trying to make this Brewer roster and prolong his career. And I know Jerry Augustine's back watching and saying, gosh, I was a lefty. Why didn't I keep going like these guys go these days, huh? They're still in demand. It wasn't as easy back then to stick around that long. Probably not. Right? I mean, probably not. There weren't as many teams. Teams didn't carry 12, 13 pitchers. It was a 10-man pitching stab back in Augie's day. If even, right? Right, yeah, well. Will Myers, the 1-1, one, one, misses 2-1. Now, we were joking around uh, with a lot of the guys last week when we were here that, you know, Derek Johnson, the Brewer pitching coach, wrote a book about five or six years ago. And he doesn't push his book on anybody. He says it's totally up to them. In fact, he says he doesn't even tell people he's got a pitching book. And it's a good one, by the way. Um, but if anybody were to read that book first on this Brewer roster right now, you'd have to think of Chris Capuano first, right. wouldn't you? Mm hmm Graduated Phi Beta Kappa from Duke in economics. Now it'll be interesting to see if uh, Capuano has a shot to make the ball club. Again, the oh, well. starting rotation is pretty much set at this point. You never know what can happen. You have injuries, trades. Cappy's certainly a guy that will give you some strong innings. Well, you've got Will Smith penciled in in that bullpen as a lefty. And the Brewers on Saturday signed Franklin Morales, the lefty from the Kansas City Royals, to a free agent minor league deal. So he's trying to be perhaps a second. Capuano's in the mix. Sean Nolan. Sean Nolan's in the mix. The 3 2 misses. So the first two batters reach base against Chris Capuano here in the third. Capuano is one of those guys that's going to be around the strike zone. You know, he's only going to throw you strikes if he feels like you're going to be laying off his tough pitches. That was a good take. That time by Myers, who's walked twice now. And it certainly doesn't have the stuff to throw it by you. He's got a great pickoff move. Terrific changeup, and that's the pitch that Will Myers just took for ball four. That brings up Blash, the left fielder. 
Capuano misses again. 0-4 with a 7-9-7 with the Yankees in 40-plus innings of work a year ago on the major league level. He also had 22 walks. Trying to regain that magic. Yep, 11-year veteran. He first appeared in the big leagues with the Brewers back in 04. There's right, one on the on. outside corner to Blash. Well, this is a, a fine example, though, of some of the new guys that are in this spring training camp. What? The age fluctuation. You got a guy like Capuano who's been around for a long, long time. 38 years old, right? Mm -hmm. And you got guys that are on the uh, brink of becoming major leaguers who haven't been around, you know, on this level at all. Excuse me, 37 he is. He'll be 38 in August. There's a strike from Cappy, two and two. But that's the whole idea. Bring him out here and just see what happens. If he sticks and proves he can be here, he's going to be very beneficial, not only to the team, but that uh, that bullpen as well. Yeah. All right, just missing those, uh, those corners, just a little bit low, a little bit off the corners, and... Padre is doing a really good job laying off those pitches. Carlos Torres, the home plate umpire. Another 3-2 on the way. Broken bat. Little ground ball to first. Peterson flips to Cappy as he grabs the ball barehanded for the out. That right off the end of the bat, so... Capuano able to pull the string a little bit right off the end a cue shot down the line and Capuano a very good athlete able to pounce over there and able to make the play over at first base barehanded well, that's as good as a sacrifice as runners move it up to second and third one down here in the Padre third inning that brings up Hunter Renfro He flew out to center back in the second inning. Capiano's best season in Milwaukee, 2005, an 18 game winner. That burn run average under four at 399. Has never been able to replicate that type of season. Of course, injuries have been a big part of Capuano's issues throughout his career. He's been on a disabled list quite a bit. Those 18 wins at the time back at 05 marked the most by a Brewers pitcher since Teddy Higuera. Also had 18 back in 1987. He's tied with three others for fourth place on the all-time franchise single-season win list. Man, Teddy was a 20-game winner. What was that, 85? 86? What was that? Off the top of my head, I'm not sure, but yeah, we can no, check. I shouldn't, I shouldn't ask that kind of question. I apologize. That's all right. It's spring training, Rock. I thought you knew everything. That's I don't the thing. know. I, I don't know everything. I get so comfortable with you over here. <laughs> yeah. Capuano is not missing by much. 86, Teddy Higuera, 120. There you go. You were on it. Renfro was thinking about setting at some place on the 3-1 pitch. And he got a change up. A little breaking ball, change up, something off speed, way out in front.
Runners hit second and third for the Padres. Sun cracking through the clouds right now here in the third inning. This one fouled straight back. Yeah, the Brewers suddenly with six left-handed pitchers in their camp. They're going into camp with pretty much just Will Smith. This one hit hard left field. Flores has it. And it's long enough to play to run as Norris tags and comes home. And the Padres are now up two to nothing. Just a little bit off the end of the bat. It sounded good, but Capuana pulled the string just a little bit and kept him in the ballpark. So the hit batter walk has come around to cost Capuano a run here in the third inning. Right on his front foot and out off the end and keeps it in the ballpark, but a run does score. So here's Nick Noon in the shortstop. He doubled back in the second. Goes to Hackett on that first pitch from Capuano. Well, we already heard from Taylor Youngman, who started today's game. His pitch count got the best of him before he had the leave in the second inning. Just the first spring training start for Youngman here in 2016. They're yeah, working on some things, working on a changeup specifically. Not worried about results, just wants to get the feel out there on the mound for the first time. Capuano hits it there. One and two. Two down, runner out at second base, a run in for the Padres here in the third. Capuano, 25 pitches here in this inning. Here's the one two popped up in the infield down foul territory is Peterson and he's underneath it for the final out Padres add one more long inning for Capuano but he gives up just a run
Fox Sports Supports is proud to team up with National Alliance on Mental Illness and their commitment to improving the lives of families and those living with mental illness. Learn more about how to be stigma-free. Visit FoxSportsSupports.com. Wind swirling around here in Maryville, a beautiful spring training afternoon for baseball. Glad you're with us. The Brewers and the Padres, fans making some friends out in that outfield. A lot of kids here, a lot of spring breakers on hand as well. Very early in the spring training season. Not even a full week in the books just yet, but the Brewers off to a nice start for 0-1. They trail the Padres here as they go to Hitton in the bottom of the third inning. And it's going to be Will Middlebrooks, who spent last season with the Padres. Oh, Phil. In their organization at, at AAA as well. Philip Umbar on the mound now for the Padres. Man, that's yeah, that's 2014. He was in Japan last year, the Kia Tigers. So Umber trying to yeah, make his mark once again back in the United States in big league baseball. Last appeared in the major leagues back in 2013 with the Astros. High fly ball, second baseman. Weeks going out to grab that one for the first out. Umbar's had some success, obviously, on the major league level. Man, he's been with a number of different teams. The Mets, the Twins, the Royals. And we mentioned that he was with the Astros back in 2013. And Rivera. A long, loud out to center field. Boy, he's been swinging the bat awfully well. Man, looking good. You know, he's playing some third base, some second base. You know, he can play short. A yeah, guy that uh, would not be surprised to see him make the ball club in spring training. And we're going to talk with Yadiel coming up when uh, he's done playing in this game. A little bit later on in the later innings of this game off to a, a terrific start had a chance to talk with him a little bit during batting practice as well not a home run hitter but he's had uh, two consecutive games with home runs in the ninth inning everybody's a home run hitter here in arizona Good time of year to swing away right especially with the wind blowing out it has been blowing out the last two days there you see it Flags at half staff for the passing of Nancy Reagan on Sunday, yesterday. Going back. 94 years old, yeah, boy. Yeah. When you think of first ladies, you can't help but think of her, at least in our era, first. And uh, just knowing the, the work and what she meant with her time in the White House with Ronald Reagan, especially later on in the years when... It has now been discovered that he did indeed have Alzheimer's while he was the president. Yeah, classy lady. Yep. There's Flores needs a new bat. Batting in the leadoff spot for the Brewers. Led off the game with a single to center field but was caught stealing. Umbar in Japan last year, but you know, Rock, back in 2012, remember the perfect game when he was pitching for the White Sox. Only the 21st pitcher at that time in Major League history to throw a perfect game. And Flores ruins his perfect inning. All the way to the wall in right center. He's thinking about three. He's on his way there. It's going to be a play, and he is out. Flores tagged it, went all the way to the wall, and a good relay out there, and the Padres get him trying to stretch it into a triple. That's a nice stroke. Ball in on him, pulls the hands in, but you never want to make the third out at third base. That's what he did. 
A good cutoff and relay gets him at third. So that's how the inning is going to end. The 9-6-5 relay to get Flores. We are through three. It's 2 nothing Padres. Summer-like weather here in Maryvale. Brewers and Padres battling in spring training baseball. Let's take a look at our Cousins game summary and show you how things happen. The Padres picking up single runs back in the second and third inning. That uh, first run highlighted by Jabari Blash's solo home run in the second inning. And so they have taken the most out of their two hits in this game. The Brewers have threatened several times, but have nothing to show for their four hits so far making a lot of outs on the bases what yep. is it four that's a lot four outs on the bases in three innings including that last by Flores trying to stretch a double into a triple so they made an out two outs at second and out at third and an out at home right you know the old rule of thumb in baseball never make the third out at third base or the first out at home plate they've done both today Hill, nice backhand and a strong throw to get the first hitter here in the third inning. Austin Hedges is retired. Now well, you throw those, uh, you know, unwritten rules out in spring training early when you have guys trying to make clubs. Great cancel is uh, let these guys do their thing, see who can run, who can't, who has the instincts, who don't have them, and... It's a learning experience, not for these players, not just for these players, but for the coaching staff as well. What can these guys do? And they're going to take a good hard look at all of them. Armorista looking to bunt fouls it straight back. Well, it, it at this stage either, well, first of all, this game isn't perfect, but when you try to be perfect here, try to impress, that, that becomes a little bit more difficult as a player, Rock, when you're trying to make this team. You're trying to impress and do the right things. Right. A couple of the outs on the bases would never happen in a regular season. At least you'd like to think they wouldn't. Making the third out at third. First out at home plate. Now, Ed Cedar during the regular season would never have sent, you know, the runner to home with nobody out and gotten thrown out. That would not happen. Hey, Brewers single game tickets are now on sale for all the season's biggest games, including... Free shirt Fridays, all fan Sundays, post game concerts, and more. Check out the Brewers' complete 2016 schedule and reserve your tickets at Brewers.com. Capuano with the pitch and a slow roller out to third and two down. It's a long third inning for Chris Capuano, more than 25 pitches, but he retires the first two batters here quickly in the fourth. That'll bring up Jamil Weeks. Scooter Jeanette, 
remains out so far here early on in the spring. Brewer's second baseman and somebody that could obviously bat leadoff for this club right now. He has a sore shoulder, and Craig Council said today that uh, it's not really getting a whole lot better, so he might be going under an MRI exam, some further tests. Not a lot of concern right now. It's still early in spring. They hope to get uh, Scooter Jeanette back, obviously, sooner rather than later. I mean, he's a key piece to this team, playing exclusively at second base. Right, and Ryan Braun has been the head out of games. He's probably not going to see game action until mid-March, you know, 15th, 16th of March. But he's feeling good. He's partaking in all, you know, game activities. You know. spoke with him today during batting practice. And Chris Capuano is going to be done here for today. We'll talk about... A pitching change when we come back to Maryvale. There's a look at Chris Capuano in the Brewers dugout. He is done for today, an inning in two-thirds work in relief as the uh, Padres have a runner out at second base, and that'll open the door for Blaine Boyer to come in with two down here in the Padre fourth inning. Yeah, really good numbers for Boyer last year with Minnesota. He's been with a number of teams. His second uh, time with San Diego, he spent some time back in 2014 with the Padres looking to make this ball club, I should say, make this ball club for the for the Brewers as a non-roster invitee. So pretty good numbers last year for Boyer. Man, looking to make this bullpen. A 2 4 ERA. That'll open up some eyes to a team looking for pitching. Runner goes. That's Weeks. Throw from Maldonado is late. So he is in there with a stolen base. That yeah, good jump. And he got a very good lead. Maldonado, really no chance. That's a very good jump. The high leg kick for Boyer. Maldonado's throw a little bit on the third base side of the back. No chance to get him at second. Maldonado getting the bulk of the duties behind the plate early on in spring training. Jonathan Lucroy is healthy but they don't want to use him behind the plate nearly as often in the first half of spring training he'll work his way back in there dh in uh, yesterday's game they got luke croy got maldonado they're going to be your two catchers but uh brewers are very high on a couple of their catchers that uh, we have seen here in spring training this young kid nottingham big kid can hit He's got pretty good skills behind home plate. And he is, uh, he is meshed very well with Jonathan Lucroy early on. J just what you would hope. A guy with the class and uh, the educator that Lucroy is. Very first day of spring training camp. Nottingham went up to him. And um, <laughs> they're just saying hello, by the way. little 
Q job in the left to base hit Weeks racing around third. He will easily score. Oh, yeah. And that allows the runner to get into second base. So Jankowski plates Weeks and winds up at second base. Well, if, I guess if he had it to do all over again, and Liriano might have, or I should say, Flores would have thrown that into second base to keep the runner out of scoring position. Weeks, Weeks runs extremely well, so with two outs, a couple of singles, a stolen base, Padres extend their lead. Three to nothing now. Here's Derek Norris, the catcher. He was hit by a pitch and scored a run back in the third. Oh. This one hit hard left field. That's going to be past Flores. And will roll all the way to the wall. A run is in. And Norris is going to hold at second base and settle for an RBI double. That increases San Diego's lead down to four to nothing. That boy are getting the baseball up a little bit. He's more of a sinker slider pitcher. Not a strikeout guy. Left that one up right off the end of the bat for Norris, who's having a nice day today. A couple of throwouts at second base. Now a double to score a run with two outs. So three consecutive hits for San Diego with two outs. Here's Will Myers. Again, a runner in scoring position for the Padres. That's been a lot of the talk of, uh, of camp. You talked about the energy. The communication is the other big push for Craig Council. That really comes down all the way from David Stearns, top of the organization on down. And that's why it was good to see a kid like Nottingham come in here. Came over in a trade with uh, Oakland that sent Chris Davis over there. And projected to be pretty high in the organization as far as the next big catcher popped up shallow center field Neuenheis underneath it for the final out Padres you know. get a couple of runs here in the fourth inning and now grab a 4 nothing lead over the group Baseball is presented by Menards. Save big money on all your home improvement needs at Menards. The Padres with a 4-0 lead over Milwaukee as we go to the bottom 
of the fourth inning. Brewers have four hits. They've committed an error, still looking for their first run of the ball game. Great afternoon for baseball here in Maryvale. Temperatures aren't scorching like they were near 90 for the first couple of weeks at camp. Down near the 70 degree mark here today. Sorry, Wisconsinites, but it's it's a tad cool in Phoenix. But we refuse to put jackets on. We're not doing it. No. No. I mean, when it's 40 degrees and you're sitting here complaining about being cool at 70. No. Nope. Shame I, on you. I just layered up with uh, long underwear and long sleeves <laughs> underneath my Fox Sports Wisconsin shirt, but okay. that's okay. All right. You wear it well. Hand warmers, feet warmers, boots. Just need a little iced tea, maybe some lemonade up here. I'm sweating. Hot chocolate would be good. Here's VR to lead off the brewer half of the fourth. We usually get uh, the, the ice-cold lemonade delivered. Oh, it's coming. Oh, it's games. coming. Don't yeah. worry. I talked to Mike. <laughs> I said, Mike, do you have any packets of hot chocolate? No, no. He said, not in Phoenix, pal. Our buddy Mike at Sports Service here. He works for the Packers, you know, at Lambeau. Yeah, he, he just came up from Green Bay. Said it was minus six. Great guy and uh, treats us well. It'll be on its way. I'll tell you what. They, they treat us very well here in Maryvale. You know, this is... Uh, Brewers might be looking for a new spring training home sooner than later, but uh, they treat us right when we're here. It's a beautiful complex. Next big move, though, might be into something, you know, bigger, bolder, and better, like that guy there hitting the weight room. <laughs> NBR strikes out. Pretty good change up right there from Umber. And Maryville, the Brewers have been here a while now. Was it 98, I think it was? Beautiful ballpark. The uh, the playing surface, outstanding. And good sight lines, and there's a swing out in front and over the top of a good changeup. Brewers are on a year-to-year -year contract right now with Maryvale, City of Phoenix. You know, the Brewers are the only team left in Phoenix proper. Everybody else, all the other teams, all the complexes out in the surrounding areas. Surprise, Glendale out in Mesa, Talking Stick, Scottsdale. You know, part of that rocket, too, you, you want to be able to, to spread out and have the right amount of fields and, and uh, workspace for the guys out on the field, but you, you want that within your building facility as well. And I think that that's what they're also looking to expand here. Uh, obviously... If upper management within the organization has grown. Your scouting departments has grown. How you conduct your business, mm -hmm. uh, video, all the they, digital. They did extend the clubhouse facilities uh, a couple of years ago. More weight training, physical therapy. Yeah, but the way these complexes are these days, I mean, uh, unbelievable. I mean playing services and stadiums. I mean, they rival a lot of big league ballparks. That's right. Too. And Aaron Hill, the veteran, draws a walk. So base runner here in the fourth with one down brings up Kirk Neuenheis. It's going to be interesting to see in the next three weeks how center field settles out that's really your your only true position right now that you have the most competition and maybe the biggest question marks talking about nine guys vying for that spot nine yeah yeah a lot of people think this guy can grab it new and heist what he needs to do and wants to do after talking to him is i mean you got to be able to get the bat going too and that's his defense has been very good mm-hmm he was released by the Mets, picked up by the Angels last year, and released by them, and then right back in New York. So he wants to find a home. Well, all these guys are getting a lot of playing time up throughout spring training. Not too many off days for some of these guys. They want to be in the lineup, show what they can do. Craig Council certainly wants to see what they can do.
What do you think of the new uniforms the Brewers are sporting this year down here? Well, pants are different. You know, my question, Rock, is on the pants. We need to come up with an answer on this. Are nice. they going to go with a, a plain, white, clean, crisp pant look? Well, at least for spring training. I'm not sure for the regular season, but no stripe down the sides. We'll have to ask Jason Schauger, guy in charge of the equipment. Maybe if uh, Jason is listening in, he can, uh, Maybe text he can me. send you a text. This one hit hard. Nice play by Weeks. He'll get new and high silver at first base as Hill makes it to second with two down. But it's a good-looking jersey. you got the ball and glove logo on one sleeve and the, uh, the new Arizona patch. It looks like a Route 66 sign, and it's got the AZ on it. I like it. You like the mix of the color scheme and then the, the old logo with the yeah with the new script Milwaukee. Here's Carlos Subero, the Brewers' first base coach. There's Peterson. There's that patch you were talking about. The AZ patch. They have it on the hats too. That's a that's standard with all spring training now. On all the teams. I like the look though. I mean it just is uh it means it's spring training. It mm -hmm. means we're here. We're here to work. Just another thing to buy in the fan zone. Oh, there's that, too. It's good looking. Liriano had a base hit back in the second inning, but he was caught trying to steal second. He's another one in the mix in center field, but he's playing right today. Actually, all three outfielders for the Brewers today that are starting, including Flores, all in the center field mix. This one hit hard, but right to short and snagged out there by Noonan. So that's the third out here in the fourth inning. So the Brewers leave a runner in scoring position and trail 4-0. Spring training baseball and Brewers manager Craig Council kind enough to put the headset on. Big wave to everybody back at home. It's our first TV game back in uh, Wisconsin for spring. Craig, big smile on your face and uh, tell us what this uh, first spring training for you as uh, your first full season as manager is going right now. Well, it's going well. I mean, I think we're we're about one week into games, uh, the first 10 days of the, the practices and the workouts uh, were great. Lots of energy. I think the youth of the team has really served us well in this, these first two weeks with energy and, and the competition for jobs and, you know, the, the new players and the eagerness to impress. So it's that's created a lot of energy around camp. Yeah. How much uh, how much difficulty is there, you know, getting to know all the new players and you've got a lot of new coaches, you know, the front office is new. How's that all working out down here? Well, it, it's. It's a challenge for sure. I mean, the new players were just, you know, you're trying to just find out information. I mean, you've seen today we've made some outs on the bases, and really, we're, 
I like it because we're trying to find out some information about guys. Speed of Eddie's trying to find out speed of base runners. We're trying to find out which guys we can put on their own to run, things like that. So when it's new players that we don't know a lot about, haven't been in the league a lot, um, we're going to have to get that information now but rather than later. Well, Craig, tell us how this works for, for, you know, sometimes spring training is a mystery to, to baseball fans. What kind of phases do you try to excel to from, from week to week throughout the six weeks that you're down here? And where do you think you're, you are right now and you're thinking about next week? Well, I think in this, this first 10 days, you know, you're really just trying to get everybody some action. You're tr kind of trying to keep it the, keep it the same for everybody. The, the, uh, the, the guy, the starters, the Aaron Hills and the, and the uh, Luke Roy's, they're on kind of a, a strict plan of two days playing and one day off. Um, and, then, and then a lot of the guys just trying to compete for roster spots are just, just mixing in and kind of coming in every day or coming in late in the game. And, and just you're just trying to evaluate as you see them. Yeah, Craig, I was talking to Ryan Braun, uh, Jonathan Luke Roy. They've been very impressed with the athleticism and the enthusiasm that a lot of these young kids have brought to the table. I mean, do you see the same thing with these guys? Yeah, I think that's true. I think, um, you know, when you get youth, that's kind of what you get. And so I think we've added players like, um, you know, Keon Broxton is certainly a, a, a guy he's not playing today or will play later today. That's the athletic guy. Yadier Rivera has shown very well early in camp. So when you get younger players, Reimer Liriano's shown really well so far. So when you get younger players, I think that's that's what you get. That's kind of almost what you expect and, and what you need from them. And then... And then the learning curve is, uh, you know, is going to be important. We've talked about turning their talent, their kind of impact talent, into skills. And I think skills is what ultimately wins baseball games. But there's a transition from using your talent and turning it into skills. Yeah, can you give us a little bit of a, a quick update on uh, Jonathan Lucroy? How has he responded with concussion symptoms? And uh, when do you anticipate Ryan Braun being in the lineup down here? Jonathan's, you know, complete green light. No no issues at all. He's, he's caught a couple games. He's, um, you know, just kind of general population uh ryan will start playing in week three i think is, is probably what we're headed for right now and, but he's responded very well to everything so far all right craig like to see the double play out in front of you right there for that uh, defense for you we really appreciate your time and uh good luck the rest of the way we'll talk again here as our games go on in spring okay all right thanks guys have a great day thanks all you right that's uh, craig council uh brewers manager first full season here with the ball club and uh, immediate impact already. And he's got to like the double play he saw right out there. And Craig gets a, a seat out here, and he is going to, uh, well, the coaches and, and the manager, a lot of times they'll sit in uh, open chairs in front of the screen outside the dugout. And he's active down there. There's doing first. some evaluating and, yep. and a lot of pitching changes, especially early on, everybody on a pitch count. A lot of firsts, a lot of kids in spring training for the first time. Manager, his first spring training as a manager for Craig. Of course, he's been around you know, the ball club uh, just about every spring since he retired from his playing days. But you know, learning experience for everybody, players, coaches, front office. It's been a lot of fun to watch, a lot of enthusiasm. Nick Noonan, the batter here with two down for San Diego. I think one of the things, Rock, that's interesting just finishing up the conversation about the council influence is you, you talk to a lot of the young players who aren't used to having uh, like an older, uh, more seasoned manager come in and, and they have a sense where there's a, a little better easement into maybe their first you know, big league camp or some of those young guys that are trying to make that next step to the majors, that they can feel that ease with Council. They know a lot of guys that they're, they're here with, and uh, Craig Council is not that far removed from playing himself. That's right. All right. We've got a break. Coming back, 4 nothing San Diego.
Miller Lite What's on Tap brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light beer. It's Miller time. And you can crack open another can with us on March 10th, our upcoming TV games. We got the Giants, March 10th. Then March 11th, the Rangers. And March 12th, the Rockies. So we're happy to have you aboard here for game number one and plenty more to come throughout the spring. That's for sure. Yeah, big sponsor weekend coming up here in uh, at Maryville. Brewers bring their sponsors down, treat them like kings and queens. And Drew Pomeranz doesn't care about anything about that. But, uh, you know, 53 appearances last year with the Athletics. He made nine starts in those 53 appearances. A good earned run average of 366. Well, last year is a breakout season with Oakland, a career-high 53 appearances for him. So now he's with the San Diego Padres, and he is set to face Shane Peterson to lead off the Brewer half of the fifth inning. Brewers have had some base runners, but have been... Knocked down at second base a couple of times, third base once, and at home plate, so they remain scoreless. Yeah, Craig Council was uh, kind of validating what we were saying up here about the aggressive base running. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but they want to see what these guys can do in certain situations. Who can run, who makes a good turns at the bases, and who has the instincts, so that's why they're doing that. Right, who, who's going to respond to it, right? Right. Shane Peterson, you remember last year with the Brew Crew, played wherever he was needed, and Rock got himself into even better shape this offseason. Lost some weight, and it's uh, to a point right now where he is hoping to latch on to this ball club, hits it hard straightaway center into an out. Guys losing weight that don't seem to need to lose weight. Kind of makes me feel bad. Something about the loss of body fat. I don't yeah. know what that is anymore. All right. Padres have thrown out some pretty big boys out there in the mound with Andrew Kashner. Pomerantz is 6'5". He can uh, rush it up there in the mid-90s. Here's Martin Maldonado. You know you're having a, a long spring training camp when two weeks in, three weeks in, the flu bug starts going around, and that's what the Brewers are going through right now. Got to shake that out of the clubhouse as soon as possible. Right. A lot of guys are slowed up. Send them home. They come like that. You don't want everybody getting sick. Jeremy Jeffers was slowed by a, a slight pulled hamstring very early in camp. Had a bullpen session today, his first serious time out on the mound. So they're hoping that's a good positive step in the right direction to get some work in for him. You know, we talked about Scooter Jeanette's shoulder. We're trying to get that fixed up. <coughs> Craig Council said today, you know, as long as he's got about 10 good days of spring training games, so he's got some time yet to, to heal up without any concerns. That's about all you need. He's, right. If you play 10 games, you're getting, if you play him full, you're getting 35 to 40 at-bats. Be ready for opening day. That's what the hope is right now. Mm -hmm. That position players really only need, a guy like Ryan Braun, for instance, needs about 20, 25 at-bats plate appearances to get ready for the regular season. And Craig said he, he probably won't see action until three weeks in. So. Right. That'll give him the 20, 25 at bats. Keep him ready. Three, two, Maldonado hits it hard. Left field. This one's going to make it all the way to the wall. Molinato will trot into second base with a one-out double. Another runner in scoring position for Milwaukee. Let's see if they can start taking advantage. Turned on that one, didn't he? High fastball. Knew it was coming. They able to get on top of it. That was right down Main Street, and Maldonado able to barrel it up and rip it off the wall. One hops the wall for a double. 
Good swing by Maldonado, rewarded with a double. Brewers with their fifth hit of the game. San Diego also with five hits, but they've been able to score four runs today. Here's Will Middlebrooks. Will, another player in the mix for either third base, which right now looks like it's going to be Aaron Hills. And so Will looking for some playing time there and over at really any infield spot he he said he played all four infield spots last year. He's DHing today. Came up a couple of years ago with the Red Sox and burst onto the scene. It looked like he was going to be the third baseman over there in Boston for quite some time. Just hasn't panned out. Yeah, he said he got uh, he got to that early point of his career, like a lot of guys do. You get into a you get into a comfort zone when you think you've you've arrived and you've gotten to a certain point. Never and figure it out. You that, never get that comfortable, right? That comfort zone is uh, one of the major learning lessons. And now he's looking to latch back on, and this will help. Dumps one into right center. Yeah. Will hold the runner Maldonado at third, and Middlebrooks quickly back to first base. Yeah, he's not going to send Maldi. They've made enough outs on the bases. They said, uh-uh, not down by four runs. There's a chance to get something going here. Two on and one out for Rivera, and he's been swinging a mighty bat here in the first week of spring training already with two home runs and four RBIs. You had the walk-off home run in the bottom of the ninth in yesterday's game that broke a tie and a win over Cleveland. That led off the ninth inning. We thought we were going to settle in for some extra frames, some free baseball. I was ready. Oh, yeah. But I was also very happy. But there are ties down here. I was happier for the young kid to hit the home run, that's for sure. Good guy, Rivera, trying to become a utility player in this infield as well. VR looks like he's got shortstop locked up, at least for now. Of course, a lot of talk about Orlando Arcia potentially, if he continues to play the way he is, being up at the major league level at some point, maybe midseason. Well, he's got some kind of quick hands, doesn't he? Arcia out there on short, yeah, at is. shortstop. He's something else to he watch. Something to watch. Amazing. Smooth. Little Tepper Rivera back to the pitcher. He'll go to second for one. Relay not in time. The Brewers get a run in. So Rivera safe on the fielder's choice. And he does get the Brewers on the board. Making contact with the man at second and less than two outs. Rivera didn't hit it hard, but was able to get the run in. Not hit hard enough for a double play, particularly with Rivera running to first. And we hope to catch up with Rivera a little bit later on in this ball game. Top of the order and Ramon Flores. Flores with two hits in the game, a single and a double. But he's been out. Caught stealing at second and also on a relay trying to stretch that double into a triple. Oh. Flores can swing the bat. He can get on base. 300 hitter a year ago at triple A for the Yankees. Looking for a spot in that Brewer outfield. Again, as Rock said, one of eight, nine 
players that right now are vying for some playing time. Good news about a guy like Flores and a lot of the guys that are in camp here, they can play all three outfield spots and play them well. Brian Braun moves to left field this year, and Domingo Santana will go to right. So that outfield's going to have a whole new look to it compared to opening day a year ago. Yeah. Popped him up left side. Armorista makes a nice catch right on the warning track. Now that'll retire the Brewers. They do pick up a run here in the fifth inning. So San Diego with a 4-1 lead halfway through this ballgame. Back in Maryville, top of the sixth we go. The Padres with the lead over Milwaukee here in spring training play. The Brewers unbeaten so far in their first five games. They have to rally in this one. Tyler Thornburg on the mound now to take over. Yeah, 367 earned run average for Tyler. He's been battling injuries over the last few years. And uh, in talking to Thornburg, this is the healthiest that he has been in a long, long time. And he feels good. He feels as though his stuff is back. And the Brewers are strongly considering him to be in that bullpen. Of course, he's out of options, which means if they don't keep him, they may lose him to another team. Well, he had a up and down, needless to say, 2015, making the uh, big league roster for opening day and pitching on the bigs for the first three weeks before he struggled and was sent to Colorado Springs. And he was there until September call-ups. Just hasn't been healthy. I mean, it's, that's been the... The reason why Tyler has not been able to live up to expectations, and now he is. Talked to him the other day. He says he's never felt better. It's tough enough to play this game and be successful when you're feeling good, let alone trying to you know, get the job done at this level in the major leagues when things aren't right. There's that good fastball from Thornburg. Velocity way down for Tyler last year, last couple of years, actually. The fastball, the curveball, and that very good changeup for Thornburg. Boy, good swing. And Yadiel Rivera has been kind enough to put the headset on now down at the Brewer dugout. And Yadiel, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Right on cue. How did they know to do that? How you doing today? <laughs> uh, uh, it's feel good to be here with you guys and, and you know, be happy to uh, be part of the Brewers camp and just uh, enjoy it. It's been a good start for you, Yadiel, and they have an op excellent opportunity to make the ball club. Very versatile as far as where you can play in the infield. Do you have a preference where you'd rather play? Where do you feel the most comfortable? Uh, sure stuff, pretty much. I feel comfortable in there, but, you know, uh, you come here and, and be ready for everything and just uh, be ready to play third and, and second. So, but my position is uh, sure stuff. 
But you're off to a tremendous start swinging the bat. You feel good. I mean, did you play winter ball this year? Yeah, and, and how uh, how ready are you for spring training? Yeah, I play uh, at the poly and, and winter ball. And, and, you know, I feel ready for uh, for game time. And, and that's how pretty, pretty much it's working right, uh, right now. Uh, getting ready for, for the season. Yadi, I'll talk about just the competition. Uh, you mentioned that you prefer playing shortstop right now, but would settle for anywhere. But... Uh, at, at this point, though, how has the competition been, and, and what does it do for a ball player like you and and some of the other guys down there? I don't, I don't know if it's easy to answer these questions here when you're getting peppered with all the sunflowers, but give it your best shot, my friend. Uh, you know, uh, you got a lot of uh, good guys in, in, in this team, and one of those is uh, Arcia and, and now uh, Vijar, and, and, you know, uh, just try to do something every day that they impress the, the staff. You know, that's something I doing the routine play kind, kind of stuff like that and, and that's the best part of, of, uh, of the game you know be, be around the, the coach's mind how has time with uh, Craig Council your new manager here and uh, all the new coaches been how's that how's that transition for all you guys been going I mean I council have been around the, the Brewers system uh, uh, pretty much uh, <laughs> I see so you had the seas now something to wash it down <laughs> yeah uh, it's been tough in here but yeah I can't tell me and it's been around and uh, you know uh, a lot of these guys like uh, been in the system like me Arcia you know you know everybody in this uh, team and that, that's a big big key for me uh, you know for for the Brewers uh, be a uh, success uh, season now you know we're going to be interviewing RC at some point this spring so you're going to be able to get him back and you're oh, going to yeah. think about something I, good okay I'm going to love that one <laughs> if, if you look over your left shoulder right now, I think you have some bubble gum. That's uh, that. That's it. It's in a green wrapper. I, I'd like you just to to reach back there and grab that and just find Arcia and give him one toss. It, it's just hanging on your jersey back there yeah, on your shoulder. Right. <laughs> oh, listen. I appreciate your time and best of luck to you this spring and uh, continued success to you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. All right, Yadiel Rivera, kind enough to join us, and uh, I, I tell you what, they're going to have to put him in, a, put these players in some kind of a shield. That's for sure. This one hit a long ways into the gap by Jamil Weeks, and he is flying around the bases, plates a run, and slides into third for an RBI triple. It's not easy work yeah, putting on the headset like and doing something. the interviews down there. And they, come, sure. they they start that young, too. I mean, you're talking about Arcia. What's he, what, 21 years old? Yeah. It's usually the veteran guys that are peppering the guy getting interviewed with seeds and water. And, but you like the enthusiasm down there in the dugout. And they're having a good time. Well, this is one of those days where the uh, spring training dugout, not quite as full as other days. The guys down there, a host of replacements already defensively for the Brewers. A whole new outfield and a whole new infield except for VR, the shortstop. Chikini's over at first base. Jake Elmore is at second. And Colin Walsh is over at third for the Brewers. And Rene Garcia behind the plate now catching. Eric Young Jr. out in left. Keon Broxton out in center. And Alex Presley out in right. Nice. Well done. To get help. I got help from a man, Glenn. Stats guy, it's important Glenn, here. Glenn made the trip all the way from the offices at Fox Sports Wisconsin in Milwaukee. You can always tell the guys that are new down here. A little white. Then they turn red real quick. And then they get back to Wisconsin and turn tan. I don't want to say white, pale, perhaps. I think that was a better choice of words. It all works out, though. You know what I mean. I know what you mean, Rock. Infield in for Jankowski. Little pop-up. And the shortstop, BR, takes it for the out. They have better angle for the shortstop to make that play. That would have been a tough play over at third base. BR penciled in to be the opening day shortstop for Craig Council. Slick fielding shortstop, having a slow start with a bat. Well, he was with uh, Houston the first half of last year before Korea came in. The much-heralded shortstop, top prospect for the Astros. And so 
He stepped aside for him and faces a very similar situation this year if indeed Orlando Arcia makes his way up by midseason. He yeah, said, we'll you know see. what? I can't worry about that. Right. No, you can't worry about it. I don't think the Brewers are quite sure about that. All he has to do is go out and, and play, win the job. And Norris hits another one into left field, the base hit, and another run comes in for the Padres. So two runs in the inning, and Norris having a fine day at the plate here in his last three trips. Well, that's Thornburg getting hit hard. He doubled up on the curveball. The second one, Norris hits hard into left field. Thornburg got the first batter, Hedges, then gave up a single, triple. Was able to get a pop-up, and now on two-out RBI single, plates a run. Here's Will Myers. Tyler Thornburg started for Milwaukee, his first spring training start. Of course, he's penciled in to be part of that five-man rotation. Gave up a home run. And then ran into the top tier of his 35 pitch count. Now, I did get an answer from Jason Schauger. About the pants? Yes. The Brewers will be wearing those all season with every uniform combination except for the pinstripes. You know, the retro pinstripe oh, jersey. Sure. You wouldn't want to wear solid white pants no, with, wouldn't look good. with a pinstripe. Nope. So that's that's definitely new. So there you go. I always remember the Brewers having some kind of piping down the legs. So. Right. Yeah. Not this year, bud. That's interesting. Were you part of the uniform uh, committee on that one? I was not. No, no. I didn't think so because you weren't sure about it. So I'm not on many committees. No, I'm on a need-to-know basis. You know that. <laughs> a lot of times, Rock, I just find stuff out, just like you. We're here today. That's all that matters, right? Yeah. And we'll be back at it Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. BA's coming back into town for those games right, for yeah, you. Yeah. How many are you doing? Well, I've got a good handful. I'll be down in another week. We found out we have another one to do. We do just we? found out about the 21st. Did I we believe, get any uh, work assignments for that yet? I did not. No. no. So there's there's a TV game, but we're not sure if any of us are working it. Is that what you're saying? But the game will be on. I hope it's not one of those where they penciled in a no announcer game. I have not been asked if I was free for that day. <laughs> <laughs> of course I am. Why else would I be down here? Why else are you down here? Right. This one hit to left. Eric Young Jr. with the catch. Dad played with the Brew Crew. Good to see him in a Brewer uniform. Trying for a spot. Yadiel Rivera. A shower of sun, flower skates, and water. Edgy. Edgy.
year here in Arizona, and it's time to start planning your 2016 group outing to Miller Park. Group packages are available at the special discounted preseason rate through March 31st. So place your reservation now to lock in the lowest prices for your 2016 group event. Visit Brewers.com slash groups. Who Looks won? Like the Italian one, Rock. I had my head down reading the card. Yeah, great to see the racing sausages here at spring training. That is awesome. Yeah. And you know, Rock, we're not on TV tomorrow, so we want to make a, an early congratulations to Greg Gard, who's been the Badgers' interim basketball coach. Numerous reports mm -hmm. confirm that he will be officially named the permanent Badger head coach tomorrow. Yeah, why not, right? They had a good year. They've had a tremendous yeah. year. It was a kind of a rough transition, but boy, he sure made that team his, and uh, congratulations, and they have uh, really entertained us. You know, we're here in the month of March, the last couple of years, the entire month we've watched the Badgers right. go to Final yep. Fours. I don't know if anybody's expecting them to do that now, but they're going to go to the NCAAs when a lot of people didn't expect it, so congratulations. Yeah, yeah rough loss yesterday, right, Purdue? Yeah, that's okay, though. Big Ten tournament next week. Yeah, buddy Matt Pope is going to be down here doing some That's uh, right. TV. Assuming that uh, he's not going to be busy with the Badgers. He hasn't been able to come down here no. because the Brewers, I mean, the Badgers keep making that deep run in the tournament. Never assume, though, Rock. He may not make it. My guess is that Matt's going to come down here a little bit pale. What do you think? <laughs> huh? A little sunscreen? You want to tip him he's off before need he comes it. down? He's going to need it. Maybe go down into the tanning beds a couple of days before he comes. You better warn him. Of course, we all start out that way. Yes, but we have a, a, a longer time to ease our way into it. He'll be looking for that tan on, on the first day down here, I mm -hmm. guarantee it. Here's VR. Gets his third at bat of the game. He struck out his previous two times. Had a good start to the spring, 375 entering today's game. As you mentioned, though, a minute ago, Rock, he's be nice to get that bat a little more consistent for him. Yeah, it's been a rough stretch the last few games. A lot of ups, a lot of downs for a lot of these young players. And he strikes out for the third time today. It's a rough day. At the plate for Jonathan VR. That's one of the things, perhaps, you know, if Greg Council is thinking about using VR as a leadoff hitter, the switch hitter, you don't want uh, too many strikeouts out of that leadoff spot. And talking to Craig and reading the reports, the only spot in the lineup in the batting order that he's sure of is number three. And that's Ryan Braun. Everything else is to be determined. And you don't get a strong sense early on where anyone's really going to fall into place because Luke Roy hasn't played that much. Braun hasn't played at all. Walsh tags one to right all the way back to the warning track is Renfro before he hauls that in. Walsh on the first pitch. Yep, just got under a little bit, keeping it in the ballpark. They get bats for these guys. Here's Keon Broxton. Keon got the start in center field in yesterday's game. Makes his first appearance in today's game. Broxton came over from the Pittsburgh Pirates in that Jason Rogers trade. Entered last year, rated by Baseball America as the best defensive outfielder in the Pirates system. Yeah, he can run him down big time. That's a pretty crowded Major League outfield right now for him to take that next step, so he's very happy to be a Brewer. Yeah, you think? Andrew McCutcheon. Starlin Marte over there. He said all those guys were, were great to him when he had his chances to play in a few ball games in uh, in September for Pittsburgh when they were in that the pennant chase of course a year ago but he said as good as 
those guys are he wants to take their game with this new club here with the Brewers and make his own mark you see those long legs he kind of reminds me of a contemporary of mine former brewer I played with Devon White remember Devon absolutely long legs long strides and covers a lot of ground out there in the outfield Roxton's idol growing up was Ken Griffey Jr. Picked a good one there. Yeah. Go on, ready? Ready? He awaits the 2-2 pitch. Inside, runs it full. There's another one of these young guys who are ready to crack into the major leagues, going to really appreciate having a manager like Craig Council with all the, the blue-collar style of play that uh, got Council two World Series rings. He said all of us guys remember how Craig Council played the game. Yeah, get the most out of your ability, be smart, think ahead. That's certainly what Craig Council did as a player and trying to get his own players here now to do that. Well, Craig Council won a couple of World Series. His Padres make a pitching change and you talk about what he was able to do with the Marlins in his early stages of his career and then later with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Remember the purple uniforms that they had, but uh, Council scored the game-winning run with the D-backs and had a lot to do with that rally that the Marlins had as well. Boy, two World Series for Craig Council. Still makes his home in, in Whitefish Bay, always has during the offseason, and is extremely passionate about making Milwaukee a winner again and trying to get this Brewer franchise their first World Series championship with him at the helm. Man, loves the, loves the Brewers. He always has and wants to bring winning baseball back to Milwaukee. Yep. Watched a lot of Brewer games in his day. Idled Robin out, Paul Molitor. It's alive again, huh? Derek Idle out on the mound now for the San Diego Padres. Well, you see more strikeouts and in innings pits, which means when a guy has more strikeouts and in innings pits, he throws hard. He's got that special pitch to get the punch out. A 497 earned run average in 24 games. Go along with a one and two record. You see the split fingered fastball grip that he holds. the sixth inning in the Brewers and Padres starting to make some wholesale changes. Presley's going to get a chance to bat now for the first time for Milwaukee. Alex Presley, a non-roster invitee. Another player in trying to lock up uh, one of the outfield spots here for the Brewers, perhaps a utility spot there. Got Broxton over at first. He drew a two out walk. Let's see if he tries to steal. The Brewers have been aggressive on the bases. Presley can't check his swing. 
Down two strikes. Claimed off waivers from Minnesota. Actually, the Brewers signed him as a free agent. He was with the Twins back in 2014. Signed by the Brewers as a free agent a year ago. Broxton on the move and is safe out at second base. And it took off when the ball bounced in the dirt, but Norris, who's having a heck of a day back there, picked it cleanly. Kind of got rid of it late. He wasn't sure if he was taking off and not able to get his man. And you can see clearly that Broxton able to beat it. That'll be a wild pitch, not a stolen base. And Presley strikes out to end the threat here in the sixth inning. We are through six, headed to the seventh inning. Padres six to one. Well, six to one, Padres over the Brewers as we head to the seventh inning. Hey, new for 2016, the Brewers have announced three all-kid giveaways. Jonathan Lucroy rep jersey, a paint your own Bernie Brewer bobblehead, and a Jonathan Lucroy chest protector backpack. To see the Brewers' complete 2016 promotional schedule, visit Brewers.com. Now, Breeze kicking through the press box up here, Rock, and uh, all of our notes are starting to blow away. Yeah, I got to close what that door. What are we going to do Is without the notes? Usually, you close the back door here. It's closed, though. Okay. Wind shifting. All right, Tillman on the hill for Milwaukee here in the top of the seventh inning as the Padres lead this game 6-1. to one. Daniel Tillman, another non-roster invitee. We've heard that uh, term used a lot here in this ball game. We're seeing a lot of players that are getting some chances early on here. Ordinarily, one or two maybe will uh, make the ball club as a non-roster invite. Brewers signed him in December. And pitching out of uh, Rancho Cucamonga last year. 2015, 37 games, and a 261 earned run average. He faces Jabari Blash, the left fielder. 
Lash getting his fourth at bat of this game here in the seventh inning. He homered back in the second. And this one hit hard straight away center field. Presley just down the warning track to the wall. Ball carried a little bit out there with that wind we've been talking about. But it is a long, loud out. So one down here in the seventh for Tillman. A lot of connections with the Brewers and the Padres with the changes of some coaches and some players. Pat Murphy was their interim manager a year ago. He began the season as the AAA manager. And then Jamie Quirk took over for him. And now Jamie Quirk is with the Padre or with the Kansas City Royals single A team. So the former Brewers bounced around a bit too. But uh, Pat Murphy had Ryan Liriano and Will Middlebrooks. We saw Mark Loretta in uniform for the Padres. He yeah. took the uh, the lineup out before the game. Yeah, it's a special assistant for the Padres, but you know, hey, get a chance to suit up and teach some of these middle infielders a thing or two. Mark Loretta, a very popular former Milwaukee Brewer. Yeah, surprised that Loretta has not been in the coaching ranks. And certainly, you know, when, when he was with the Brewers, he, he looked like a guy that was gearing himself to be a manager at some point. Very intelligent with the Northwestern background. Right. That's right. That content to be in the front office. He and Capuano could have a scholastic square off, a debate. Crossword puzzle contest. Jeopardy. I would just be keeping score. <laughs> I could dole out the questions as long as they were provided. And a difficult time at that, right? Yes. Here's Nick Noonan. I think one of the things that I remember most about Mark Loretta beyond his... This one hit hard to right field by Noonan. And caught right at the wall. Nice job out there by Michael Reed, who just came into the ball game. So wake up for you on the first attempt on defense. Nice play out there. He goes back, knew exactly where he was on the field. Didn't even have to look. Been able to make the catch easily into the fence out there and right. Nothing to it. That'll bring up Jose Pania now. He'll bat for the first time for the Padres. I was going to say, the one thing that I remember most about Mark Loretta off the field was uh, the passing of the, the base and the flag from County Stadium right, yep. at, at the end of that made, final yeah. game, the speech. Yep. Miller Park was... Uh, just bustling right next door, right outside the right field wall, ready to open up. Long list of good second basemen. Mark Loretta that the Brewers have had. Started off by Jim Gantner. Fernando Vina, fantasy camp oh, coach. Oh, yeah, you got that right. Right? You ever had a chance to talk to Nando, Fernando Vina? A little bit. Has never had a bad day in his life, or at least he gives you that impression. Got to like guys like that. Shaking hands, could be the mayor. Amazing. Good doesn't guy. That, doesn't Fernando. that inspire you, though? I mean, doesn't yeah. it make you say, man, if only I could be a little bit like that. Yeah, he's a guy that creates energy yeah. for you. You know what I mean? He's one of those guys that makes you feel good being around him. Brewers have a lot of a uh, lot of players like that here, but more importantly for these guys, I can say they've got a lot of coaches like that right now that have that type of energy that uh, make you feel good to be around the club. Mania pops up and another nice running catch for Michael Reed. A couple of big catches for him in right field here in the seventh inning, and the Padres held off the board.
have a five run lead on the Brewers. Stretch time here at the ballpark. They download the MLB.com ballpark app and personalize your trip to Miller Park with digital ticket access, seat upgrades, food and beverage maps, exclusive check in offers, and more. Download ballpark today, free for your smartphone or tablet. John Edwards out on the hill for the Padres here in the Brewer half of inning number seven. Milwaukee trailing in this one. As you take a look at Edwards last season, 22 games on uh, the big league level for the San Diego Padres, and he's set to face Garen Cicchini to lead off the Brewer half of the seventh inning, trailing by five runs. Big dude, 6'5", 230. Not a big, tall pitchers for this Padres ball club today. Number 14 round draft choice for the Cardinals back in 06. And he's facing Cicchini here. Another third baseman who's come over from the Boston Red Sox. Kind of a similar storyline a little bit to uh, Middlebrooks. He's kind of the next guy in waiting as well, and looked like from the AAA level, he was ready to make that next step, and on, John. things just didn't work out for him on that final step to the majors. And now looking for some work here with the Milwaukee Brewers, and he draws a walk here to start out the seventh inning. How's your scorecard looking, by the way, partner? Real good. I have not uh, entered in any changes. You haven't entered any? One of us has to keep this thing simple. <laughs> You're the one with all the names. I'm just making a general analysis. You're doing a good job of being general. Here's Renee Garcia. Although Glenn, uh, Glenn's doing a nice job. Glenn's, keeping you up to date. Glenn's doing a great job. They're doing a heck of a job in the press box. You got Ken Spindler and Zach Weber. Now we do have one of the media relations guys, the head guy not here, Mike Vassallo. Where's Where's Mike? Back in Milwaukee, waiting for his first child to be born. Want to send a shout out to Gina Vassallo, who is uh, in labor as we speak. So uh, hang in there, Gina. It's all worth it in the end. Easy for us to say. Right. Now they're. We wish we wish everybody there in the Vassallo family good health. Mike was uh, telling us that Gina has been in labor since Friday. Wow. I was going to say which Friday are you talking about, yeah. but just being in labor is, right. is tough. Hang in there, kid. Hang in there right. for sure. Oh, she's in labor. She's definitely watching us here today. Oh, yeah. Take her mind off of things. Will Millbrooks on deck for Milwaukee. He served as the DH in this game. And he is the only starter to keep that spot so far. Going to get some good at-bats here. Garcia, slow roller to short. Bobbled once, but nice recovery for the out. That moves Cicchini up to second base and into scoring position with one out. Middlebrooks one for two in this game. Had a base hit back in the fifth inning. Well, if you're headed down to spring training and you're going to get in time for tomorrow's game, the Brewers are playing the White Sox over in Glendale. You have the webcast going in that one tomorrow.
You got webcast duties tomorrow, Rock? I do not. Nope. I think Lane Grindle said he's going to be on the webcast tomorrow for hey, the he first was here time. Today. Yeah, he first was here time, to... a new uh, radio yep. announcer the Brewers have just hired. He'll be joining uh, Jeff Levering on the uh, Brewers Radio Network along with Uke. Lane's called a lot of games for yeah. the University yeah, of Nebraska. He said he's anxious to get going again, so he'll be on the webcast tomorrow. I think he's going to be on with Steve Woodard now that it, it's all coming together, Rock, the more we talk about it out loud. Yeah, Woody was here uh, today, did a webcast with us yesterday. Yeah, did a nice job, his first game. Yeah. I always get a kick out of seeing the, the former major leaguers when they they come to the ballparks now they have to wear the pass with the word media on it mm -hmm. we were talking about that earlier mine doesn't say that that doesn't say that no 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 yours says ambassador doesn't it not sure it doesn't say media general middlebrook <laughs> strikes out general a pretty good pitch little wrinkle in it and Middlebrook's over the top of it there's Jake Elmore first at bat of the game for Jake Elmore another non-roster invitee Played for four major league teams over his career, but his batting average hit 215, and that's prevented him from making that next big step. But this guy's got a pretty good storyline. He's played in every single major league position. And back in 2013, became only the 14th player ever to pitch and catch in a game. And no one's done that, Is that since. Right? Yeah. Wow. Very, very versatile. But not at the same time. No, he did not throw to himself, no. Discovered by Pat Murphy a few years back. So that's his connection to the Brew Crew. Two down and a 2-1 count. High 3-1. and one. Eric Young Jr. waits on deck for Milwaukee. See if the Brewers can get something together here. He's got Darnell Coles, the Brewer hitting coach, just behind him. Right down the middle. Three and two. David Ross is uh, currently the Cubs catcher. He's also pitched and caught in a game. Strike three called, and Elmore goes down. Final out here in the seventh inning. Edwards dealing some heat. 6-1 Padres.
which is presented by authority of the Milwaukee Brewers. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Milwaukee Brewers. Good look for spring training right there. Padres and Brewers battling here today. Late innings and Milwaukee trailing 6-1. to one. Great day for baseball here. Temperatures around 70 degrees and getting some texts and tweets from people saying it's in the 60s back in Wisconsin today, Rock. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. That's a good sign for opening day coming up <laughs> April 4th. We await the day that we can have a warm enough opening day in Milwaukee to have the roof open. That'd be a, just a pipe dream, though, wouldn't it? Yeah, I don't see that happening. I think a day like this, a little breezy, sun out. I even take, you know, what, 45, 50? But the roof? Yeah. Why not? I'd take that. It's not like you can't play it anywhere I mean, else that way when back, they don't have a roof. Back at Old County Stadium, there's some opening days a lot colder than that. I think the average temperature of opening day at County Stadium was about 30 degrees in April. Yeah. Well, Jacob Barnes last year pitched in Biloxi. Good season for the Shuckers last year. And 39 games, six of those starts, and a 336 earned run average. Jose Rondon hits one, and it's misplayed out there. And Center and right. It's like Presley and Reed getting in the way of each other out there. And they're going to rule it a triple. Ball got away from both of them out there. Yeah, Reed, Reed peeled off. It looked like he had the best chance at it, but Presley, the center fielder, has got to take control of that. If you call it, you better catch it. And neither one of them able to come up with it, so a lead-off triple. Ryan Schimpf now batting for the Padres. Hey. And he hits it into the corner in right field all the way to the wall. A run is in and another triple coming up for the Padres. That ball was smoked. Just dropped the head of the bat on it just inside the right field line and all the way into the corner. So Rondon with a triple. Shimp drives him in. And just able to tuck it inside the right field line. Yeah, so the Padres able to extend their lead. 7 to 1 ball game. 11 hits for the Padres against Brewer pitching here today. Top of the order and Travis Jankowski. He's going to get his fifth at bat in this spring training game. Pretty that good, doesn't right? happen too often. No. Brewer started out with Taylor Youngman on the hill, then Lampson, Capuano, Boyer, Thornburg, Tillman, and now Barnes. Infield in. This is spring training. Normally down by six runs. They want to cut off that run. Brewers have uh, had some dramatic late come from behind victories down here in spring training. Looking for another one. Cut off that run at third base. Yeah, they've... Uh, Posted a 4-0-1 record in their first five games of spring training. Full for Barnes against Jankowski. Consecutive triples to open up the inning. And this one hit the other way. Nice play by Walsh. Looks at the runner at third. 
and makes the out at first. Nice yeah. job. Yeah, that was a tricky hop right at the last minute right there, but uh, Walsh able to make the adjustment, brought the glove up and able to get the out and keep the man at third base. Here's Christian Betancourt. It's his first plate appearance here in this game. There's a strike for Barnes. Good breaking pitch. Always gives you an advantage when teams are sitting all over and getting good swings on the fastball. That first pitch breaking ball for a strike. as they check down with the first base umpire. Well, did he go? Pretty close. But at this point, everything's a strike. If you offer, it's a strike, right? Even if you don't. Seven to one ball game here in the eighth inning. A lot of Cactus League games to go. Brewers are going to wrap up Cactus League play and then make a couple of stops before they go to Miller Park for opening day by April 4th. A couple of games at Double A Biloxi. Or a game down there, I should say, in a couple of games in uh, Houston. Yeah, two in Houston, two in Biloxi, then head north to Milwaukee. Their opening day on April 4th. This one right up the middle. And it stopped at short, but no play up there for Perez. A run does come home. And an infield hit and an RBI for Betancourt. Not be able to make contact with the infield in. No chance uh, really for Perez to make the play up the middle. If he's back, he might get the out. Run still would have scored. Here's Eric Kratz who took over at first base. One down here in the inning and a runner over at first base. A couple of runs already in for the Padres. Talked about some of the new Brewer coaches. I just see Jason Lane sitting down with the uh, cast of coaches in the chairs by the backstop near the dugout out there. He's one of the new coaches for the Brewers who has a long history as a uh, position player and a hitter in the majors, but actually finished up his major league career as a pitcher. He made the uh, transition. He said, I'm a lefty. Why not? Give all it a shot. We'll all the way on the right. Yep, yeah. all the way on the right. Yep, Jason the Lane. Far right there. You'll recognize Jason Lane with the Brewers in the uh, Astros battles they used to have back in the mid-2000s when the Astros were still in the National League. 
This one hit hard into left field, another base hit. So Kratz is aboard. A hanging breaking ball from Barnes and uh, the Padres getting some good swings. The other guy. Yeah, Jason Lane is uh, probably going to be known more for helping the hitters and helping out Darnell Coles, but he's been designated as a major league coach instead of something more specific like assistant hitting coach or assistant pitching coach because he's going to help out the pitchers and the hitters. Mm -hmm. Probably skew more towards the hitting side, but if he sees something... And he's been through it. If you can, if you can do what he did on the major league level, and we're not talking about just pitching a game or an inning. He pitched with the Atlanta Braves. He has a lot to offer. Yeah, hey, vast uh, experience. Anybody that's was able to get as many years in the. Major leagues is Jason Lane, certainly a valuable asset in that dugout. And certainly a big help to Craig Council. Well, you got a guy like him, he said, I've, you know, I'm playing a minor league, major league level for 16 or 17 years, and, you know, that passion is still burning inside to compete. Mm -hmm. He said, it became pretty clear in order to stay in the game what he needed to do if he was going to keep going and he made that transition and we were talking about it with him last week that it's interesting with a lot of guys they'll tell you that they're going to miss the camaraderie when they're gone from the game but when you can still coach you still have that camaraderie he said i'm going to miss the competition the most especially on opening day when you're in that dugout knowing you're not a player anymore, you're a coach. Right. And that's the toughest thing for players when it's time to hang them up. Some, not many have the opportunity to leave on their own terms. It's either injury or you get that pink slip, you get released, you can't find a job. And, you know, those are the, those are the guys. I was in that category. It, it's tough to swallow when you're done playing because you really miss that competition and, you know, the camaraderie, being around the guys, being in the clubhouse. All right. Flash strikes out. Big strikeout for Barnes. He needed that. He's given up four hits in this inning. Only one thing better than coming back after your playing days and being a coach, and that's being a broadcaster. There you go. <laughs> you don't have to put in nearly as many hours. <laughs> Good battle for Blash out on the mound. He was down three balls in that count. It was 3-0, and, oh, and he came back and picked up the strikeout. Yeah, Jason Lane first appeared in the major leagues back in 2002 and finished his playing career in 2011. He has a home run that was used in the movie Boyhood. He was playing with the Astros. He said it wasn't staged or anything. It was they were in filming some scenics and he had a home run in the ball game and they ended up using it in the movie. He didn't know it until there were some friends that were out looking at the early releases of the movie. Said, yeah, just watch this movie, Boy Boyhood, and you hit a home run. Did you know that? <laughs> that one was nominated for an Oscar, so that would be seen for a long time. He says, that's pretty cool to know that every time that's shown or somebody sees it somewhere, that he'll have that part in that movie. Barnes just misses. Strike zone, a major league ready tight in this game. <laughs> Chris Capuano really struggled to get some calls from the home plate umpire today. Carlos Torres. Yeah, it's been a rough day for the Brewers on the mound. I think everybody has had their share of issues out there. 
Now, in looking at uh, Jason Lane's playing career, he, he actually played in 2014, became the oldest pitcher in franchise history to make a start for the Padres. Went from 2007 to 2014 between Major League appearances. But up, up. Eight to one, Padres, middle of the eighth. Back here in Maryvale, nap time for some people. A little nap in the sun today. Sun not too intense, but the temperatures in the upper 60s right now. Bottom of the eighth we go. The benches are clearing for both teams right now. Everyone getting a chance to get their spot. What got going on right there? A little uh. A little nose sunscreen, maybe? A little Neosporin or something <laughs> in the nose. Oh, that could be. Maybe did a face plant out there in the hill. There you go. EY Jr. at the plate for Milwaukee. Ryan Buchter out on the hill for the San Diego Padres. Padres pitching has been pretty strong in this game. Yeah, one run for the Brewers on six hits. There are the numbers for... The Padre left-hander, 43 appearances. He was in Oklahoma City last year in the PCL. Signed by the Washington Nationals back in 2005. He pitched one game in the big leagues, and that was in 2014 for the Braves. Eric Young Jr. has been around the Major League circuits this time he strikes out trying to win a spot with the Brewers on the Major League roster. So he strikes out to open up the eighth inning. Dad played for the Brewers and I remember when his uh, dad was traded to San Francisco during the pennant race. He said, one thing I want to do is at the very end of his career, if I could just hang on long enough to play in the majors with my son. Good family. Yep. Eric Young, the current version, actually led the National League in stolen bases one year. Wasn't that long ago. Remember that year, he uh, at the end of the season, the Brewers were in New York. He beat out Gene Segura by a couple of bags, yeah. I think it was. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe one stolen base. They went head to head that three game series. And a fly ball out to right, and Perez is retired two down. Yeah, if EY makes the roster, he'd be. It would become the third father-son pair to play for the Brewers. Tito and Terry Francona. And 
Davey and Derek May. EY Senior played for the Brewer Crew in 02 and 03. So it's been a while. Yep. We saw Terry Francona here yesterday managing the Cleveland Indians. Colin Walsh wears one for the team right there, boy. Any way to get on base, right? Yeah. yeah. Some ways to get on base hurt more than others. Well, that one uh, looked like he got him right on the ankle bone. Here's Reed getting his first plate appearance. He's been busy in that outfield. As soon as he came in, in the seventh inning, made consecutive nice plays out there in the field. Michael Reed trying to latch on with the big...
Eric Kratz out there at first base. He thought it was going to hit the bag, I think. A little tentative going after it. Went right under the glove. Check it out. Almost hits first base on his next bounce. That's what kind of messed him up. Ball gets by him. A run scores. That'll be an E3. For a second run of the ball game. Defensively, it's been a, a fairly clean game, just an error for each team. Had one misplayed ball in that Brewer outfield that was recorded as a triple. You know, shouldn't have ended up being there, but really the biggest thing we've seen is a lot of outs on the bases, especially early in the ball game. Yeah, first three innings, the Brewers had four outs on the bases, but you know, Council has said he wants his guys to be aggressive. He wants Ed Cedar to be aggressive sending base runners to see who can run who can't who's got the instincts around the bases all doing things that they would not do in a regular season Dominguez. not many better at third base than Ed Cedar got a good sense of how his base runners are able to get around the bases knows the throwing arms of the outfield and He's been a good coach in the Brewers organization for many, many years. I think Eddie's got almost 30 years under his belt. I believe 92 was the first year he joined the Between the uh, big leagues and, uh, you know, the minor leagues. You know, uh, Eddie found Hank, the ballpark dog. And Cicchini draws the walk. So here we go. Base is loaded. Yeah, Brewers are without a hit in this inning. So a check out at the mound. This inning started with the first two batters striking out and flying out. So a hit batter, a walk, an error, and another walk. They've kept things rolling, and the Brewers have a run in. Base is loaded. Garcia puts it in play, and this time it's handled cleanly by Eric Kratz. And that's the final out as Garcia is out for Milwaukee. So the Brewers get a run, and she gets a souvenir baseball. here in Phoenix, Arizona and join a major league join major league baseball and the Milwaukee Brewers in the fight against cancer. MLB will celebrate the stories of fans who are going to bat against breast cancer in their daily lives. The honorary Batgirl 
Winner will be selected for each club. Visit honorarybatgirl.com to vote for your local honorary bat girl today. All right, back here in Maryville, Damian Magnifico will be on the mound here in the ninth inning for Milwaukee as they trail in this game 8-2. to two. And he's trying to do something that uh, has been pretty tough all day for Brewer pitchers. That's come out with a clean inning. And yeah, the Brewers have only had one three-batter inning, actually two three-batter innings. But have not had a three up, three down inning. If that makes any sense. But Magnifico, another one of those Biloxi Shuckers from last year, 42 games. And a 117 earned run average. Outstanding work out of Magnifico. The Brewers' number five draft choice back in 2012. They're hoping for some big things in the future from him as he faces Peter Ben Ganson, who's playing third base right now for the Padres. This one straight away center for the first down. Magnifico on the Brewers top 30 prospects, the big right handed pitcher. Orlando RC, of course, at the top of that list right now and a lot of people think he'll be at the major league level, perhaps by mid-season of 2016. Brett Phillips, number two on that list. Promising center fielder that, who knows if he could make his way up to the majors this year, but a uh, lot of talent right there between those two position players. And then Jorge Lopez, He's had tremendous success, especially at Biloxi this past season. He's number three on that list. You look at this young Brewer pitching staff right now, you look at the starting rotation and the immediate depth. Some of that immediate depth includes Lopez, that's mm -hmm. for sure. And, Absolutely. And I don't think there's any question that this club fully expects to use eight nine ten starting pitchers i mean it's just a logical thing in baseball these days you got to get through injuries and yeah, starting rotation pretty well set at this point for the brewers you got guards you got chase anderson the newcomer from the diamondbacks jimmy nelson willie peralta and today's starter taylor youngman but he has some depth down in the minor leagues and Jorge lopez is certainly near the top of that list. We saw him last year in September come up to Milwaukee and threw the baseball pretty well. A good location with his pitches, a good changeup. Carlos Subero, who is the Brewers first base coach this year, was the Biloxi manager last year and he's been promoted to the big leagues for the first time after 25 years of being in the minors and, and he hasn't been just with the Brewers he's been with several other organizations and um, when he looked at Lopez at the start of last year at Biloxi he said I'm looking at what developments he needs to make and the potential that he has and and uh, he said he had him pegged to be about a year and a half maybe even at the double A level before he's ready to move on to his next big step before he actually gets it and becomes productive. He said it took a month and a half. Now he would know, talking about Sabaro. He's started his managerial career in the minor leagues in 2001. 2001 to 2015, a manager in the minor leagues and finally getting an opportunity at the major league level. And you see a good pitch from Magnifico. Good slider going down and away. It's always good to, you know, reward, you know, guys like Sabaro with opportunities in the major league, spending so many years in the minors. Hey, you work your way through it and you get the ultimate reward, the show.
Rondone with the lineup. And that's how the top of the ninth will end for the Padres. Brewers are final of bats coming up with this ball game. Brought to you by Columbia St. Mary's, a passion for patient care. Eight to two, the Padres leave Milwaukee. Their offense has been clicking against Brewer pitching here in this game. And uh, their big offensive boom came early in the second inning. Jabari Blash, a home run off the starter, Tyler Thornburg. And the uh, Padres have made the most of their opportunities out of the bases where the Brewers early in this game were cut down twice at second, once at third, and once at home plate in the first three innings. And um, we've seen a host of replacements here this afternoon for both teams, the Brewers and Craig Council, utilizing their young bench, their young pitching staff, as Jose Dominguez steps on the mound here in the ninth inning for San Diego. Yeah, minor leagues last year was uh, in Durham for Dominguez. He spent... They made four appearances with the Rays in the American League. He's also been with the Dodgers for a couple of appearances. And looking to get three outs to put this one in the books for San Diego today. So Pinto's going to get a chance at the plate for Milwaukee here for the first time. Yeah, we had a good chance to visit with the the new coaching staff, and I know Craig's really excited to have Pat Murphy on board, and like you said, Sabero had been in the minors for 25 years. Jason Lane, just a player a year ago in the minor league system anyway, and this goes on for this team. Dirk Johnson, the new pitching coach. Spent the last three years with the Cubs, and you know what? You, you look at that situation alone, and strike three is called on Pinto for the first out. You look at that situation alone with Derek Johnson, the last three years with the Cubs. Look where that organization is right now. Right. So he's helped develop some young talent on that level. Well, that's what uh, Craig Council is hoping that he will bring to this Brewers organization. He certainly has a number of young pitchers to work with. That's for sure. No shortage of that. Including a lot of guys in his starting rotation. Laner. Laner. Here's Jake Elmore. He got caught looking at strike three his last time up in the seventh inning. Oh, 
back, spot. If you're coming to spring training tomorrow, as Elmore walks, the Brewers will be playing the White Sox over in Glendale. We've got some TV games coming up. Starting on uh, March 10th, 10th, 11th, and 12th coming up next weekend, or this coming weekend. Now the TV game's right here at Maryvale Baseball Park. You know, we got the sponsor weekend coming up this weekend. Do you ever, have you ever been there here for that? No, actually, Rock, I have not. That's some good food. That's some good eating. Yeah. Starts on Thursday night with the uh, the party on Thursday night, then the nice barbecue on Saturday. I usually head out with the Miller Coors folks on Friday night. Man, this is a uh, this is a big event. I, I'm trying to figure out how I haven't been a part of it in the past. How do you get in? They just got to be here. Do I need to be, do I have to sponsor myself to get into that? Which one are you talking about? The sponsor part. I know that, but each one you want to go to, you got to ease your way in. Maybe well, one. Well, I thought this was open, like I, you're saying, I thought it was a weekend. I mean, these are events, right? Are you a sponsor? I'm, I'm going to be. I'm <laughs> thinking about it. <laughs> no, it's a good time. Brewers, it is. No, I, they, they all talk about a lot. We run into a lot of the great sponsors, you know, during the regular season over at the ballpark. And Brewers' way of thanking them for, you know, their dedication and their uh, the way they've supported the ball club over the years. They do a nice job. Where would we be without them? Right. Some of them have sponsorship up on the walls here at Maryvale. I mean, it wasn't too long ago the walls here in Maryvale were... We're just blue walls, just blue outfield walls, and they're all sponsored now. There's, I don't know if there's any other room. So it's good to, good to have them. Always good to see them and chat with them. I know some of them will, will come up and talk a little bit, and they go, I, I don't want to, I don't want to talk baseball with you. You're probably sick of that. That's why we're here. Right. Nobody's ever t said that to me. Here's some of those sponsors that back in Wisconsin and proud to have their boards up here. Oh, UW-Milwaukee played here to open up the games uh, last Wednesday. Played the Brewers here, second year in a row. Mm-hmm. Northern college teams always make the trek south to play games early in the spring. It's about the only way you can get any true game action. Strike three called on Ewan. Man, Domingo has got a pretty good fastball. I mean, he's uh, been zipping it in there pretty good. Check it out. Sitting up on the outside corner is the catcher. Let's see if he hits it. Caught a little bit of the play. That was right down the middle. EY struck out twice in the eighth and ninth inning now. Here's Perez. Well, we talked about uh, Shane Peterson not needing to, but trimming some body fat. Perez has as well. And lost some weight. Maldonado lost a fair amount. Well, we want to thank our producer, director, Marty Tarr, and our entire crew for getting our first TV game off to a terrific start. We don't always look at the results on the field for that, of course, meeting terrific starts on TV. You know what it is? Just good to see green grass and baseball when yep. you're sitting back in Wisconsin and you know, getting your first glimpse of Brewers baseball. Of course, scoreboard could be a little bit better news, but hey. Baseball's back. Perez to third. They'll go with that lead out at second base for the final out of this ball game. So the Padres 
do a number on Brewer pitching eight runs on 13 hits. The Brewers lose their first exhibition game. Eight to two is the final score here. And uh, Rock, the uh, the Brewers' first loss, though. So they're, they're off to a good start. We're seeing some good things with a lot of young guys. Yeah, it's been fun to watch these guys. They're uh, giving it their all. They've got a lot to learn, but and they're going to make some mistakes, and we saw that today. But uh, still in all, it's good to be back on television, good to be back playing baseball again. All right, sounds great. That'll do it for us here in Maryville. Again, the Padres top the Brewers 8-2. to two. Brewers' next TV game coming up on March 10th. So get ready for that one and enjoy your time if you're coming down here to spring training this week as well. Be safe. We'll see you again on the next Brewer telecast. That'll do it for Bill Schroeder. Frank Deshaun here in Merriman.